Hi guys, it's Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video for you, and today we're working on another edition of Project Stormtrooper, so we're going to be looking at some more water cooling parts on my build. And anyone that's been following the playlist, which is linked in the description, I'm trying to build a water cool loop for this build, the first gen loop that I'm trying to build for around about the £200 mark. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to have to order some parts from China. Now, the lovely people of Banggood have sent me these parts, but even though they sent them to me for free, I'm still going to, you know, include them in the cost that it would cost you to build. And today we're looking at the CPU block and the radiator. So we'll look at the radiator quickly because a radiator is a radiator. Now, this is the only part that I wish, you know, at the end of my video, I went, oh, I went slightly over budget because I spent a little bit more on a radiator. Now, I'm only going to be able to use 240 radiators in my builds. You should be able to fit a 280 AIO in the build, but from a lot of the measurements from bigger 280 rads that I want to move up to, they're not going to fit inside my build they're going to be slightly too tall now this is from a company called freeze mod now freeze mod was somewhere i was actually looking at buying all of my water cooling parts from they've got loads of parts on there the problem is when you start to add a lot of parts is that their postage becomes quite expensive but yeah i do regret not buying a more expensive radiator so this was so this was a 30 pound radiator and for 15 pounds more i could have got a 10 mil thicker xspc radiator now this is a copper radiator, it's not an aluminium, so that's why I didn't get their cheapest radiators. I'm not going to use any aluminium parts in my build, and I don't recommend that you use any aluminium parts in your build. This is a copper radiator. If you didn't buy it in white, it's even cheaper. They also make it in 120 and 100 and, and um, 360 millimeters. But it was cheaper for me to order this from Banggood than it was from Freeze Mod. But yeah, there we go. That's going to be the first radiator, and we're not overclocking at first anyway. We're just going to be using a sort of non-k cpu and a gpu so it should be fine so next up we have the cpu block now when you look at cpu blocks they should they're generally between 40 and 60 pounds so that was going to be a huge part of my budget but i wanted to get a nice gpu block um which was probably the most expensive part i i bought which is the ek thermosphere so make sure you go out and check that video out but there were cheaper water blocks than this this is a 13 pound water block and sorry that there's not an unboxing because it's just the bag that it comes in now this is the Bixki water block. Now this one doesn't say Bixki on it, but if you look at any of the Bixki ones, this is exactly the same. See that, so it's an acrylic water block. It's got in and out marked on it here. I'll bring you in a bit closer. And this is a nickel, nickel plated copper water block. I mean, for 13 pounds, this is a really nice looking block. Now, a few of the accessories you get for it, you get the mounting pins, and we're gonna install it in a second. You get the bracket. Now, this is the Intel version. This is what you get when you buy cheaper ones. Basically, they only work for sort of one platform. They don't come with loads of different brackets, but you know, that's cool. So we've got a bracket. Now, it does come with a little LED light, which pops in the side. Again, really nice for a 13 pound block. Problem is this one's green and we're making a Stormtrooper dark side computer, so enough with that so we need to install this so one thing i really like about this loads of accessories in this bag ah oh, springs just i instantly like that the back plate just screws in do you know what i mean there's a lot of expensive coolers it's like really expensive cpu coolers but i'm like why have i got to try and hold the back plate in while i'm installing this so all you simply do is put that on and put some thermal paste on. We're not even going to power this up, but I'll put some paste on just for you people who will be like, you eh, didn't put thermal paste on, didn't put paste on. I mean, I've, I've got a G5400 and a H110 motherboard, like, <laughs> it doesn't work for any of you that is taking that as a confirmation that it works. It is literally, I just use this motherboard for showing installs. So that's it you just pop a little bit of paste on put these springs down oh, yeah you've got these little plastic bits so there's ones under the screws that go into the motherboard you just put those in there yeah so you just put your springs into place and then you just screw these little bad boys on it's gonna be a little bit annoying to get started and all i do with these is never over tighten stuff and i always start like opposite corners so i'll just See that? Especially with this, because it's easier. So I'm just tightening up both sides, so it's not putting any more pressure down. 
and then we'll just put the other two on. You just want to give them a little push. It's a bit, it can be a little bit frustrating to find it. There you go, so you just push it down. Ah, that one, first time. And you know, this isn't really super important at the moment, but you just want them finger tight, sliding all over the place. All you can see is my hands. Right, now we're gonna hook this up. Like, I'm gonna hook up the pump and the radiator. So I've decided that I wanna test out my angled fittings. I wanna make sure these rotary fittings don't leak. Because, you know, I am using cheaper parts, so I'm trying to do as much testing as I can before it goes into a PC. So these are the Barrow fittings. Um, again, in the playlist, there's a video about these. That's a 45 degree rotary one. So anyone I'm not sure if I'm gonna use. That's going on the in, in it. And then I've got a 90 degree one as well. You know, so I'm gonna do as many dry tests as I can really. I'm not gonna hook up the GPU today, but okay, so that one that one needs to go up here somewhere. And we'll put that one just and I said these rotary fittings are really tight. So I'm thinking we'll do a montage now. I'm using Barrow fittings as well. These are 3858 fittings. These rotary fittings move a lot easier once they've got some bits and bobs on them. So let's get this tube fitted. Um, so as you might have seen there, I have hooked the reservoir onto the radiator. Now, if any of them were janky, now obviously that montage was really janky because this isn't screwed to anything. Trying to get the fittings on is actually this one over the CPU here I'm worried about. I don't think it's, I don't know, it was being a bit loose. You can see it's already like sort of moved into the CPU block. So we we'll just power it on a little bit, let's move some around. Put some more in. Okay. Should be enough. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave that going for a few hours and hopefully we don't have any leaks. You see we've got the block here, all flowing through fine immediately. I've got on the reservoir as well here. So I'm using this pastel red. I think it's gonna go really nice on my Stormtrooper build. No visible leaks on any of the fittings. So yeah, initial thoughts, 13 pound CPU cooler.